Well, hello, TNT Clubbers. All right, you guys. I'm sure you're having a crazy time being at home so much more than normal and trying to do all your school from there. And sadly, I don't get to see you here at church tonight for Awana, but I do still want to have Awana and spend a little time with you on your lesson. And hey, if you are not an Awana clubber, that's okay. I'm glad you're here because this is great stuff for all of us to learn. It comes straight from God's word. And so it doesn't matter if it's a Wednesday night at Awana, if it's a time in your bedroom just reading on your bed, if it's a time with your family in the living room, it always can be an awesome opportunity to spend time with God and learn from his word. Today, the Bible verse that would have been your memory verse, and oh, by the way, if you are a TNT clubber, make sure you're not forgetting to do your verses. We are here to do that. We might not be able to get together in person, but I would love to video with you. We could even see each other live, or you can give me a call and just have your parent holding your book, excuse me, while you do your verse with me or Miss Sue or any of the Awana leaders. So we hope that you are continuing to work through your book and to do your memory verses. We love that. All right, so the memory verse for this week is Ephesians 2. 10. I am going to read it not from, it's in the Awana book, it's in the lesson plans, but I really want to read it from my very favorite book, the Bible. Why do I want to read it from here? Because this is the one place that I know if it's in here, if I can read it straight from the Bible, then I know without any doubt that it is exactly what God wants me to know. It's his true word, and I can trust anything that comes from this book. So even when we read things in other places, it's always good to go back and check and see that it came truly from the Bible. So let's look at Ephesians 2.10 and see what it says. It says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. That is an awesome verse, you guys. Now, I know when you're an older kid, the verses get a little longer and a little harder to memorize. So a lot of you have your favorite way to do it, but some ideas would be to learn a little bit and then try to add a little bit and then try to add a little bit more till you get the whole thing or even just one word at a time, that's fun, or clapping along to it, um, writing it down, and only uncovering one word at a time to see if you know it, practicing it with parents or brothers and sisters. So many great ways that we can memorize scripture. And again, not just if you're an Awana, all of us want to have God's word in our minds and in our hearts so that when we need them, they're already there, ready and waiting, and God will help us to remember what we learned in the times that we need them. All right, so again, Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's workmanship. You are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Wow, you guys, we are created in the image of God, and he does that, wanting us to do good, right? which God prepared in advance for us to do. So God planned on it from the beginning, planned for us to do good things. Remember his greatest command, right? When he's talking to the man who asked, what is the greatest command? What else do I need to do? He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength and Love your neighbor as yourself. And that's the part that we're going to talk about today. Love your neighbor as yourself. Our section, and this is if you're in a one at section 4-4, the title is Discovery of Kindness and Goodness. All right, so we want to really work on being kind and good to others. And right now, especially, 
a lot of people need our kindness and goodness. A lot of people have had so many changes happen in their life recently that it's just a little tricky and a little overwhelming. And some of you probably even are feeling a little bit that way. And that's where we really need to stay connected with people and really help them remember that God is there and he's ready and willing to be your strength and he's willing to be their strength if they just turn to him in prayer. And that was part of our Sunday lesson. So if you haven't seen that, make sure you go back and check that out. All right. So I guess one thing I want you to do is take a moment, maybe five minutes, and pause the video and write down all the things you can think of that you could do to be kind to someone else. And you may, you could make two lists. You could make one that's how you can be kind when life is normal, but you could make another list of things that you can still do. There is still so much you can do even when you have to be home most of the time. So make a list real quick of some ideas for how to be kind to others. Just go ahead and pause, and we'll be back in a moment. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. I hope that you were able to come up with at least a few ideas. Um, another thing that I would love to do, but it's too hard to show it on here, so I'll post a link below to one of my favorite, favorite videos about acts of kindness. It is an awesome video. Some of you have seen it before in our classes here at church, but I will post that below in case you want to watch it again or share it with your parents. That would be awesome. All right, so even though our verse comes from Ephesians 2.10, there are actually many examples in the Bible of people who show kindness and goodness to others. So we're going to very briefly talk through a few of those. One was David and Jonathan, and this is way back in the Old Testament in 1 Samuel. So my question is, how many of you know what the situation was between David and Jonathan? Were they brothers? Were they dad and son? What was the relationship between David and Jonathan? Okay, if you said that they were best, best friends, you were right. They were totally BFFs. <laughs> All right. But the great thing is Jonathan really, really cared about him. And the crazy part about that part of the Bible is that Jonathan was actually protecting David even from his own father. His father was Saul the king, and Saul was unhappy about David because he knew that he was going to be a king. And he did not like the idea of his power being taken away. And so Jonathan even helped David stay safe, and he helped to protect him because he knew what his father was planning to do was not right in God's eyes. It's interesting because in our Sparks lesson, our verse today was, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right, Ephesians 6.1. And I love that verse, but we do need to remember that it's children, obey your parents in the Lord. So when Jonathan did not follow what his dad would have wanted, it was because his dad was not choosing to act the way that God would want him to. His actions were not in the Lord. So he protected David. When David was discouraged, Jonathan came to talk to him, even though that was dangerous for Jonathan. And he really showed love and compassion. Another part of the Bible that shows really a lot of goodness and kindness, and this one's really cool, because Jonathan definitely was taking some chances, being that his dad was the one who wanted David dead. But they were very, very close friends. In this next one, it's the story of the Good Samaritan. And Jesus talked about, a, and this was a story that Jesus told, a parable. And the Good Samaritan was the only one who 
who stopped to help a man who was very, very badly hurt on the side of the road. And religious people, two different, very important leaders that were supposed to have great faith in God had passed by the Samar- by the person that was hurt. And the good Samaritan, who normally Samaritans didn't get along with them so well, but he still stopped. And he not only stopped to see if he needed help, he helped him. He took him to a place to get cared for where he could stay. He paid for him to stay there. So he really went out of his way to make sure that the man was taken care of. He showed kindness and goodness the way that God would want him to. And that's why Jesus was telling that story to the people, to give an example of how we need to behave even to strangers. And the last example that they talk about in in our lesson that comes straight from the Bible is when there was a man who could not walk. And he was on a mat. He was paralyzed. And his friends, again, these are his friends, but they were faced with a great challenge. There were so many people around Jesus that they couldn't get their friend to him. They knew Jesus had the power to heal him, but they couldn't get him there. So they went to great lengths. They showed extreme kindness and goodness by carrying four of them on the corners of this mat or kind of like a cot that they could carry him on and went up some stairs. There were stairs up to roofs then. There still are some places. And the roofs were made in a way that they could take off part of the roof and they lowered him down right through the roof to Jesus to be healed. So again, even when faced with challenges, even when it's not so easy to show kindness and goodness, we need to follow what Jesus tells us through, oops, through the Bible. <laughs> we need to follow what he tells us and show kindness and goodness to others. All right. Um, oh, so this is fun because it goes right along with our family time or our family life card. And if you come to our 1015 Children's Ministry, you know what I'm talking about. But if not, there are five parts that we encourage families, five things we want them to do together and make an intentional effort to do these each week. So it's pray together, play together, eat together, learn together, which you can do just by watching one of these videos together, and care together. And that is where this lesson fits perfectly One of the challenges on the family life card this week for care is think of people that you can video chat or make a phone call to to really check in on them and see how they're doing during all this time that they're probably stuck in their houses more than they would like. So really make a list of people and maybe each day make a call or a video call to check in, say hi, and make sure people know you love them and make sure they know that when they do start to feel antsy or frustrated or anxious because they've spent too much time in their home, make sure they know that God is there, ready to strengthen them through this. Because guys, this isn't going to last forever. It won't be too terribly long and we will come together again. And I am so excited for that. But right now, at least I get to see you this way. And hopefully, I'm working on putting together some online classes where we can really see each other live. That'll be really great. So watch for that, too. All right. Make sure you're practicing your verse. I think I'm going to end there because we've talked quite a bit. And remember, there are extra credit. There are review verses. So don't forget, if you are an Awana Clubber, to keep on going. We're almost at the end. We are in section four, and that's our last section that we're going to learn through. So, all right, guys, we'll see you soon. We'll have another video on Sunday. See you later.